So today we're making a simple ledge grabbing mechanic here. Where if you don't quite make a jump useful for 3D platformers or any game with some platforming elements, your character will still grab onto the ledge and let you progress on. It's a fairly simple system, so let's get straight into the Unity project that we're going to be using to make this. Right here, I have a project preset up with a simple character controller. I've got a full tutorial series on how I made this character controller, if you want to check it out. It's not entirely necessary for what we're doing today. So here we're going to be adding our ledge grabbing mechanics. I already have a player movement script. You can include it in your own player movement script, or you can put it on a separate script if you want to. We're going to just include it in this player movement, so let's open that up. If you want this completed project with the latch grabbing already implemented, as well as all this player controller stuff, there's a link down below to this project in the description that you can download on my Patreon. Otherwise, this is literally all the code there is to the character controller, so it's relatively simple. I'm sure your own character controller will look somewhat similar to this. We're going to be adding on top of this. And in order to keep things a little bit more readable, what we're going to do is we're going to make a separate function for this. So we'll just make a void function for that, and we'll call that something like ledge grab. And that will just simply go up here in update, so that the function is executed every single frame. We could just put it all in update, but we already have quite a lot going on here. And realistically, all of this should be in its own function as well, but I can't be bothered right now. And that's not the purpose of this tutorial anyway. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be shooting a couple of line casts if the player is falling down. You don't wanna grab ledges if we're going up, only when we're falling downwards. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a line cast in front of the player down to the floor at the height of uh, the feet of the player, roughly. And if that line cast hits a block that we can jump on, we're going to do a line cast from the player to that hit position. And then we're going to use that line cast to figure out what position we should teleport the player to for the ledge hanging. So how do we do that? Well, first we want to put in an if statement and you want to make sure you have a reference to the rigid body. So in this case, that would be our rigid body RB, which is getting a value here in start of get component rigid body. In that if statement, we're going to check if that rigid body's velocity in the y direction, so that's up and down, is less than zero. So are we falling down? Then we're also going to make up here a new bool variable and we'll just call that hanging this will make sure that we're checking whether or not the player is already hanging on an edge so that we don't have any weird stuff happening where we're already hanging on an edge and then when we jump up we immediately grab back onto it so we'll also check with the two n percents here if not hanging and then we can open our if statements up in there, we're going to make a couple of variables first and foremost. First of which is our ray cast hit, which we'll call our down hit. This will be the hit result of the ray cast that's going downwards. Then we'll make a vector three, which we'll call the line down start. And we'll make another vector three, which we'll call the line down end. I'm sure I don't have to explain what the function for these two vector three values is. This is the starting position of our line cast, and this is the ending position of our line cast, which we're going to immediately give a value to as well. So we'll give that a value of a transform position, and then we're going to add a certain amount to that. And this depends highly on the scale of your character and things like that. So you're going to have to experiment with this a little bit. So for now, let's add a vector three dot up. This is going to be the same for everything. And then we're going to multiply that by, let's say 1.5 F. This 1.5 could be 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 2.5. However big your character is, again, you have to experiment with it a little bit. And then to that, we're going to add our transform position. And then to that, we're going to add our transform dot forward. And you can also multiply this by any number you want. And this is how far in front of you the line cast is going to happen. So generally speaking, just one unit in front of you is fine. 
But if you find that that's a little too close or a little too far away, you can multiply this with numbers that are bigger or smaller than one if you want to. And then our end position here for the line cast is going to be the exact same, but instead of multiplying by 1.5, we're going to multiply this by a lower number. So 1.5 in this case, hopefully is about eye height. And then we want to get somewhere roughly in the middle or so of the body for the ending position. So let's go for a 0 0.7. Again, might require a little bit of experimentation for your specific needs and your specific character. Then we can do a physics dot line cast and we need to pass in quite a few parameters starting with our starting position which we have the vector 3 line down start for then we need the ending position which again we have the line down end variable for then we need an out parameter so we type in out and then we say we put in our down hit so the Information that is collected through this line cast is now getting passed into this variable that we made up here. And that is good enough, but right now this line cast will work on any object in the world. And that's not exactly what we want. So we're going to make a layer mask. And we're going to make a new layer by going to its layer here and going add layer. And you can add the layer on any layer you want. Uh, let's use layer 6 here and we'll call this just ground. So now we can choose the layer ground for this object. Back in our code, now we can pass in a layer mask here. And the easiest way to do that is by going layer mask dot get mask, and then passing in within a string, the name of the layer mask. There's multiple ways to do this. This is the easiest way to go about it. And for experimentation, uh, you can also draw a debug dot draw line and we can say line down start to the line down end. This will just simply draw a debug line for you to be able to see in the scene view if you want to check out where exactly are we ray casting or line casting in this case. Now we have a downward line cast in front of the character and that we can use as a bool to see if we even need to bother doing a forward line cast. Because if this doesn't hit anything, there's nothing that we're going to be able to hang on, and there's no use in using computing power to do another cast, because that takes up a bit of resources, which is not necessary. So what we'll do is we'll put in another if statement, and then we can check if downhit.collider does not equal null. So that means something has been hit. Doesn't matter what, but something has been hit within this layer mask that is then we do the forward line cast so we can pretty much copy this entire thing over and put it into here and just change some variable names so we'll call this a forward hit and then a line forward starts and a line forward end and then just put those values where they belong and of course, we're going to change up these values as well, because now it's the exact same line cast. We don't want that. What we'll do instead is we'll get our transform position dot X as the first one. Then we'll get our down hit dot point. This is the point of connection where we hit something. Uh, but we only want the Y value because we are only interested in how high up did we hit. We don't really care about the where exactly in 3D space, we only care about the height of where we hit something. And we're going to subtract a little tiny bit from that. And then we'll also want our transform position Z for the Z value of this. And we don't need to add transform forward to it. Now, this doesn't work because in order to make a vector 3 like this, and not just copy over an existing vector 3, you actually need to make a new vector 3. And now this works fantastically. So this is where our line cast will start. So it will start at the X and Y position of our character at the height of wherever the downwards line cast hits. Then we can copy this entire thing over to the end for the forward line cast. And here we're simply going to just 
add our transform.forward again. And again, depending on how long your range needs to be, you can multiply this with a number under one or over one to make the range and sensitivity of when you should be hanging. So right now we have the line cast down that would hit here. And that would then result in a line cast going this direction, but just a little lower so that we can hit this spot over here. And that is where we're going to be teleporting our character to in order to make him hang. Then in that, we do the same thing again as we did before. So we check if our forward hit dot collider is not equal to null. We can do the actual teleportation and, and hanging stuff. So first things first, we're going to disable the gravity on our rigid body because we don't want to fall down. Then we'll also make sure that our rigid body velocity is going to be set to a vector three zero so that we don't keep on moving in any direction that we might have been moving in before. Then we'll set our hanging variable to being true because now we're hanging. And if you have an animator uh, to play a hanging animation, I don't in this instance, but you would uh, put that in here through something like animator dot set trigger and then you would put in the name of the trigger. We don't have that right now though, but that is just how the animator works. You probably should know that. Now, we make a new vector three here and we'll call this something like hanging position, which will be equal to a new vector three with a value of the forward hit dot point dot x, the down hit dot point dot y, and then again the forward hit dot point dot z. So we'll use the x and z, so the ground plane coordinates of your forward hit, but it will use the height information from the downward hit. Then we'll also make a vector 3 for a offset, because right now we're getting teleported with probably our feet, because usually character positions are calculated from their feet, to that position, and that's not what we want. We're also going to be teleported inside of the wall. So we want to offset a little bit down and a little bit away from the wall. And the way we do that is simply taking transform.forward and multiplying that by a negative number. So something like negative 0.1f. Again, depending on the dimension of your character, might require a little bit of experimentation. And we're going to add to that our transform.up multiplied by also a negative number. Let's go negative one for now. Once again, might require a little experimentation for your specific character to find a proper number. Then we'll simply add that offset to our hanging position. So that's hanging position plus equals our offset. And that then gets us the position that we want to be at. So we can just simply set our transform position to our hanging position. And now the only thing that we need to do is make sure that we're actually facing towards the wall. Because right now we might be facing any which direction, which is not what we want. We always want to be facing the wall because we're hanging off the wall. That's simply our transform.forward is going to be equal to our negative forward hit dot normal. For a little bit of explanation as to what that actually is. The normal is the direction of the face that we hit. So the direction of the face that we hit is in that direction. So if we put the negative normal of that, we will be facing into that direction. And no matter the wall that we are hitting, if we're taking the negative normal from that face, that always means that we're going to be rotated towards that face that we have hit. And that is the entire ledge grabbing code. Now we're hanging off the edge, but we also need to be able to jump off it. And here you might want to change things around a little bit and do your own thing. In the system I have right now, in the system we're talking about right now today, the only thing we can do at that point is jump. You probably also want to make a option for the player to let go and just fall down. The code for that will be very similar to what we're going to be doing for jump, so I don't really see a point in showing off both options. So we have our input jump here, and that simply just sets a certain velocity for our character. 
This is the entire jumping code that we have. Instead, what we're gonna do in our jumping code, and if you have a different input system, the same thing still applies. Uh, we're going to first check if we're hanging off of something. Because if we're hanging off of something, we're gonna do something a little bit different from this. So this is going to go into the else statement. So if we're not hanging, we'll just do a normal jump. But if we are hanging, first and foremost, we're going to re-enable the gravity for our character. Because if we're going to be jumping, we definitely want to re-enable uh, gravity. Otherwise, we're just going to float up forever. We're going to set our hanging variable back to being false. And then we will do our jumping. Now, there's a few things that you can do to make this a little bit better. Because if we just go back into Unity real quick to show off what's happening here. So we've got this thing on the ground layer. So in theory, we should now be able to hang off this edge and if we jump get on top of it right so this works pretty well uh, my character controller itself is not ideal but if we jump while holding a directional key you can see things get a little iffy so what we want to do is we want to take away input control from the player when we start hanging and only give it back a little split second after we start that jump that way the character will already be up a little higher and the given inputs will not like bother getting stuck here so let's make in our player movement script another bool real quick uh, and call it something like can move just simply a bool that we can flip on and off so if we do all this in the left grab function we can also set our can move to be equal to false. And then we wrap all of our movement code into an if statement that only lets us move if can move is true. So we can close that down now. And now we need to make a separate function real quick to re-enable can move. And the way we do that, because it's gonna have to be on a timer, instead of making a normal function, we're going to make an i enumerator and that's just a function that we can call on a timer so we'll call that enable can move that will start off with the words yield return new wait for seconds and we can give this a parameter as well so let's give this a float uh wait time something like that and then in the wait for seconds we can pass in that wait time and now any code that we put after here is going to only happen after the amount of seconds that we pass in here. So that could be like after one second or after half a second. But really the only thing that we need to do is setting can move back to being true. However, calling this function is a little bit different from usual functions because we actually need to call it through start coroutine. And then we can say, okay, I misspelled that horribly. So I'm just gonna copy it over. <laughs> Uh, with the parameter and in my experience about a quarter of a second is what we want to have here also very important to make sure that this can move variable by default is set to being true because if you don't initialize it with a value it's gonna by default have a value of false which means that you can't move at all when the game starts so as you can see i can move around i can jump and hang and okay so we need to disable the control for a little bit longer or we just need to make our jump a little bit more powerful i feel like the jump could be a bit more powerful as is so let's increase the jump and now we can do this and as you can see we don't get stuck on the edges at all and now i also fixed a little bug with the facing direction uh that we had before so now it should also work when going from this side and from that side and from every which side we might want to do this from. So that's a simple ledge grabbing mechanic. I hope this was helpful. If you want to check around in the code or just get this Unity project for whatever you want to use it for, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download it as always. And for the next time, I'll see you all back with a new tutorial. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.